I'll set that to the side so I can see the chat. You should use yeah. my standard voice and <laughs> something else. <laughs> Alright, is it... Okay. God, I'm gonna have to talk to myself. Why is it not... Why is the chat not showing up in... Oh, whatever. It's fine. I'll work with this. Alright, uh... We're live now. Wait. Wait, what? Why is it... Uh... Okay, yeah, yeah. Twitch is just being strange. The... <laughs> Let's just go. <laughs> Are we recording from your Twitch <laughs> channel or the C's Rain one? It's going. It's this is the uh, being recorded from C's. Okay. Um. Good. Good evening, everyone. My name is Scrappy Fan ninety two, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with Scrappy and Friends. This is our inaugural episode from the C's Brain Twitch channel, and well, we hope that you made a jump after we warned you for over a month's time. Yeah, I will. I should also give a bit of a disclaimer here. I did try to set up um, a bunch of the hosting stuff so people on my Twitch could see this, even if they're like going on mine, but I couldn't figure that out. It's being, Twitch is just being a plank right now and I, I'm gonna have to figure that out later. So yeah, just, yeah, that's what's going on. Oh, well, I'm here. Yeah, Savior and Joey are here again today because I guess he kidnapped us. <laughs> well, apparently yeah, they... we already have three people watching, so I mean that's good. Well, what do you know? Repeated, wrote incessant warnings do work. Well, we don't know if it's the people from the other Twitch, but it'll be nice. The yeah, the also host is working, by the way. Oh, is it? Is it actually yeah. on my Twitch? Uh, I'm on Super Mario Sonic Lover, and it says auto host. You're it says live playing Breath of the Wild. Oh, sick. Yeah. Okay. Auto hosting Seasbreak. Yeah. It's working. Cool. Okay. It wasn't working earlier, so I guess something happened. Mm -hmm. right. Fight one of those um, big bastards with a hammer. Yeah. I'm just kind of wondering. I, I'm oh. just kind of wandering around while we read this today. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it is working. Cool. Lit. Technology is so amazing. <laughs> Technology is. Indeed. Any additional prefix is not required. <laughs> Alright, so, uh. Please continue. Yeah, please continue, Scrappy. Well, since, uh, Joey and Xavier didn't suffer enough during Duel of the Fates, they agreed to come back for this. <laughs> yes. Agreed, in air quotes. <laughs> I was gonna be awake until 7 in the morning anyway. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I can't sleep. Oh, dang. So, um, we were supposed to, as you all know, we were supposed to continue to start, excuse me, we were supposed to start a Total Drama Equestria at Gary's request, but that didn't happen because people just weren't available. But he so this playing. was one of the long gestating backup stories that we, that Harry had suggested months ago. Mm -hmm. Or some time ago, and, well, now we're here. Yeah. Yes, this is, um, Scarlet Devil and Friends at Disney World by Noctilio. This is a story based off of the characters of Toho Project, and while we have read a story based off of that work before on Storytime, I gave, like, a okay-ish rundown of that IP, so Harry's gonna take it from here. Okay, I'll do my best. Okay, so, um... The I don't remember the story we read last time. I think it was I think it was it was just like Raymu and Marissa in that story. Um, so yeah, this is a completely different cast. You, you're not going to see uh, Raymu in this whatsoever. So keep that in mind. Um, I guess a general rundown for people who don't know. Uh, Toho Project is a indie series created by someone who who goes by the name of Zune, um, and it's pretty much, it's pretty much a ball-bustingly hard bullet hell series, uh, it's known for mainly the difficulty of the games and also the, um, 
the music. There's a lot of fan remixes. There's a ton of just fan projects in general. Like you can find a lot of even just fan games of Toho that's like released on official consoles. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to look to look for. Um, and yeah, all that stuff. But what we're reading today um, is a story based on characters from the sixth mainline Toho game, which is called Embodiment on Scarlet Devil. Um, and this is, yeah, th this this cast is probably it one of, if not the most popular cast in the mainline Toho game. And I, <laughs> I guess I have it, I, I have the need to just explain all the characters here. So I have an image. It's not going to be in the, in the, um, like stream or anything like that, but cool. Uh, thanks game. <laughs> um, it's not going to be in the stream, but I do have an image here that that's just used for reference. So there's the gatekeeper called, uh, Mei Ling, who, uh, it's pretty much what, what it's, what, what it says on the tin. She's pretty, uh, lazy and, uh, can, like, sleep on the job pretty easily. <laughs> um, and then there's, like, there's the librarian called Pat Pacholi, who, um, controls pretty much all the elements, but she has really bad health and, like, asthma issues, which severely hinders her, um, potential. And then she has pretty much her, like, demon, <laughs> de <laughs> like, um, l librarian helper, or whatever you want to call her, uh, called, uh, Koakuma. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. She doesn't really have any official, like, data or what what have you, like, um, like, on the Toho Wiki, like, she's pretty much all, um, based on fan interpretation in terms of personality, so people just kind of make up whatever the hell they want with her. <laughs> um, there's the, there's the maid called, uh, Sakia, who isn't, that's not actually her real name, what from what I understand, um, she was pretty much an outcast because she can control time and she stopped trying to be nice to, well not nice, but like, she sh stopped trying to be, uh, stopped trying to get along with uh, regular humans, so, Romelia, who is the head of the, of the Scarlet Devil Mansion, brought her in and gave her the name, uh, Sakia, um, so that's a thing. She's a maid, so you can just kind of get an idea from there. Um, I mean, I stopped, get, I stopped trying to get along with humans as well, so bro, same. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, I guess go, going off of that, the yeah, the head of the mansion is uh, Romelia Scarlet. Um, she's a vampire, so she can uh, she can't be out in like out in the sun for extended periods of time. Otherwise, obviously, she'll die. Uh, she'll die. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's about it, all, that's all I can really say at the moment about that. Um, and then you have her sister, Flandre Scarlet, which has the, has the power to pretty much just destroy everything, which makes her really dangerous. So she can't really leave the mansion unless it's, unless she's, like, heavily supervised by Satya, Romelia, or anyone else from the mansion. Um... And, uh, she tends to stay in her basement. She does have full reign to just wander the mansion to her own accord, but she does tend to just stay in her, in her basement. Um, also, probably because she's, like, she, she respects her, uh, her big sister a lot, so there's also that. And, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much all I've got. <laughs> Those are, those are pretty much the main cast of this, that's pretty much the main cast of this story. I think there might be a couple others from other games, and maybe other characters from the mansion that aren't in this image. But that's pretty much the main guys you need to know about. So, yeah, that's it. Hey, not Steve. 
I hope that I hope that uh, summary was good enough. <laughs> Thank you, Harry. <clears throat> If you, you'll have to, excuse me, I'm, uh, folks, you'll have to forgive me. I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm a little fatigued today. So if my narration is a little more resigned than usual, then it's just I've had a long day. Mm -hmm. How many chapters are we going to do of this? Uh, well, the Two at most. I think the chapters are fairly short, so it shouldn't be too much of a ordeal. I said that there's five chapters. Yeah, five chapters total, but we like we never do five in one episode. I don't. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be like more than two sessions, honestly. Fine by me. So which session do we read one more chapter than the other? Probably the next one. <laughs> Lit. Or we just stop halfway through. To, or we just do two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that will not mess us up let down the line at all. Now we'll be fine. <laughs> oh, <dear. clears throat> well, we're 11 minutes in, so this is Scarlet Devil and Friends at Disney World, because that's what they're doing today. Summary. Remilia's and Flandre's birthdays are closing in. What hasn't been done already for the almost 500-year-old vampire kids? Sakia decides to follow Yukari's idea, for better or for worse. Oh, poor, poor, dear, sweet Sakia. Sakuya. You might want to start wishing upon a star right now. Family-friendly fic? <laughs> this is chapter one. Theme park for the dead princess. Sis. <clears throat> I guess, uh... I, I, since, since it, the summary brought up, uh, Yukari, I, I, I guess I should mention the... Okay, so... It's a short thing. I, all, all, I'll, all I'll say for now is, um... The world of Toho is, a, is a, based on a world called Gensokyo, and... She's basic. Yukari is basically the uh, creator of it. Like she just rules over it, pretty much. That's all you really need to know. Okay, you know, I think we like. I think I mentioned it last time we did a Toho thing, but I didn't mention it here. Yes, Toho Project is that literally translates to like Eastern Project. It's just um, yeah. I won't call it purgatory, but it's like a kind of a crossroads of humans and various Japanese myth Japanese mythological creatures, kind of. Trying, trying, being the operative word to coexist. Yeah, that, that's why. That's why you see a lot of things mentioned, like stuff like the the border or whatever. It, it's basically what that means is just basically the gap between the real world and Gensokyo. Yeah, it's just. <clears throat> excuse me. It's a. How would you say it? It's. They fight hellscape demons on a regular, but when they're not doing that, it's pretty much the epitome of fantasy slice of life. Pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, um, this is Scarlet Devil and Friends at Disney World. Chapter 1, Theme Park for the Dead Princesses. And I actually don't know who's saying this first line. <laughs> yeah, no, I was the one Oh, yeah, yeah, because it's shaky foot, yeah. Alright, yes, I'm starting this off. <clears throat> okay. You've got this. You've been through a lot worse. You've got this. A shake repeats a shaky voice over and over and over. There's nothing you haven't been through that you haven't handled perfectly. Why would this be any different? There's the same voice, followed by the sound of a watch falling to the floor of a bathroom. You've got this, Sakia. You've got this! Says the maid again, talking to herself in the reflection of a bathroom mirror, visibly shaking. Remember, this is for Lady Relia. She mutters to herself again, taking three attempts to put her watch back into her jeans pocket again, due to how much she was shaking. 
A person knocks from the outside. A monotone voice can be heard from the can be heard from the other side of the hotel bathroom. Uh, it's me. Right. Hey, you done? It's my turn. You've been in there for ages. Yes, of course, Patchouli. My apologies. The maid unlocks the door, only to reveal the mage, still in her Gensokyo attire, and the sound of rowdy children in the bedroom by the end of the corridor. Nervous, aren't you? Not in the slightest, not to worry. You look deceased. Hold on, the collar of your shirt is all messed up. There was the librarian, fixing the collar of Sakya's sloppily buttoned up shirt. This was very uncharacteristic of her, and Pachi, Pachi was quick to, quick to notice. Uh, Sakya, Sakya nervously chuckles, unable to hide her anguish from her old friend. Yes, she was, in fact, the most nervous person on earth at that moment. You're right, Patchouli. I sh probably shouldn't be nervous. We have been outside, and we have been in the outside world before, and even though so much has changed since the olden times of mansions and counts, there's probably nothing to worry about. No, you're right. I hate to be nervous. This was a terrible idea from the start, actually. But, oh well, you'd do anything for our Amelia, wouldn't you? The sound of the rowdy... Rowdy vampire kids playing pillow fight two rooms away was timed perfectly to make Sakya's blood run three laps in her entire stream at mock speed. She was starting to see the pink elephants on parade already. <laughs> <laughs> Due to the stress. Pacholi was not helping. Well, thank you for helping me with the outfit. No problem. Now, can I please put mine on? You're still in the bathroom, you know. Right, right, my apologies. Come on in, I'll step away. The mage walks into the bathroom, slams the door shut, and locks the door without a word. She was the last of the mansion to still be in her usual outfit. Oh, wait, wait, uh... Last one to be in her usual outfit, uh... Crap, well, um, I... I, I, I lost where I was, um... Uh, I think Scrappy just died. Wait, what happened? Yeah, I think Scrappy's died. I still see him in the call. Scrappy? Yeah. The line continues from, uh, usual outfit onward, and then there's, like, another paragraph of narration. Hmm. I guess so. Oh. Do I sound clearer now? Oh, hi. Yes. Well, there we can are. hear you now, there so. You <laughs> yeah, you, you weren't uh, showing up at all. Every friggin' week. Yep. You died after Mansion to still be in her usual outfit. Thank you. She was the last of the mansion to still still be in her usual outfit. She must be cranky after waiting for so long. Ironic of the maid to forget the notion of time, she thought to herself. Sakia walked back to the main bedroom where everyone was waiting, in typical normal human family of the 21st century clothes. Kawakuma was carefully reading the map of the parks over and over again, making sure she hadn't glossed over a single spot while Mei Ling was starting to enjoy those cellular phones everyone seemed to be raving about. She was recording a video of whatever Romelia and Flandre had got, had going on, had going on with the pillows and bedsheets. They were both going all out in a mix of laughter and ungodly screams. We're never gonna blend in. Thought Sakia, already accepting her horrible, horrible fate as the main field trip leader. Ah, Sakia! Clamored Romelia, making the fatal mistake of turning her head away from her sister. You really took your time, didn't you? It's a good thing we planned it. It's a good thing we planned to see the that. Oh! And there, there goes the Scarlet Devil, 
sent flying through the walls by a pillow missile thrown by her sister. Flandre was bursting out of laughter and beaming, furiously doing a popular dance she had seen human kids do outside, probably as a victory flex. Oh, police, sister, will you stop moving like this? This is not ladylike. Wait. I think this is me. I think that's Romilia. Yeah, I think that's Romilia speaking. Yeah. Or wait, really? actually. No, wait. that would be Flandre because Flandre just threw the pillow, didn't she? Flandre threw the pillow. Romilia got sensed <laughs> flying to the walls. So. Complained about it, and then this would be a retort, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna presume it's Romilia complaining. What? But I saw you doing it earlier too. Nah. -uh. Yeah, huh? Nah. -uh. Yeah, huh? You were doing this. Look. And she was doing it again. Surprisingly, she might be the one who blends in the best with the excited human children outside. Romilia rolls her eyes and pulls herself back on her feet. A few minutes later, Pacioli stepped out of the bathroom in modern, co cozy pastel clothing, and the strange family finally got down the elevator and into the parks as dusk came. Thank goodness they leave the parks open at night, thought Sakia, making sure Flandre would keep, making sure Flandre would keep her umbrella upright all day would have been tricky. Tickets, please. <laughs> A staff member in front of a strange machine. Sophia turned around to the rest of the group behind her. All right, does everyone have their tickets? Yeah. Farewell. Let me remind the rules: no one runs off by herself, no bothering the staff, and most importantly, not a single bullet will be shot tonight. Have I made myself clear? Everyone went in line and got their tickets in the machine, getting in one after one. So far, so good. So far, so good, repeatedly muttered Sakia. You said something? N no, Lady Romilia, nothing. H happy early birthday to you and your sister. You've really outdone yourself this year. I'm going to have the time of my life, right, sister? I think, just Savior, I think you're Flandre. Wait, I'm Flandre too? No, wait, you're Romilia, Joey is Flandre, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, she, yeah Joey's Flandre. All right. Joey, uh, mm -mm. Ah, right. Sorry, because I get confused. Uh, can you put a note to uh, which of the two characters were the sisters? Well, Andre and Romelia are the sisters okay. and the vampires. Cool. Yeah, if you put a note of that in the Discord, that will help with this problem. I'm on it. I got yeah. it. Cheers. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -mm. I've never been to a theme park before. And it's reassuring to know that Saki is there for us as always. Yes, milady. Very, very reassuring indeed. They were in. Magic Kingdom had welcomed them. There was no turning back. She wasn't even sure why the three sages of Gensokyo decided to cooperate together at that to make this trip a possibility. She was very dubious about Yukari doing most of the work for this operation. Especially since normally the Gap Yokai couldn't care less about using their... Excuse me, the Gap Yokai couldn't care less about using her abilities for others. Who knows, she was probably looking at them from above, grinning from ear to ear to see how bad this could go. This just hit the head maid. But this sounded like yet another weird social experiment from the Gap Yokai, and they were all nothing more than her test subjects. She took a look up, to the sky, squinting, making sure wherever she'd be, the sage would notice her angry, I know what you did, I see you, hand gestures. Sophia then turned to the little devil in a merch shirt and a mini skirt for help. Koakuma, where are we standing right now? Main Street, according to the pamphlet. Uh, according to the pamphlet there. Oh, uh, are no rides here. But this is the main hub for food, exhibits, gift shops, and... Gift shops! Gift shops! Gift shops! Both Scarlet sisters were vehemently chanting at each other, cutting Kawakuma mid-sentence. Well, go figure, they want gifts already. Lady Remilia, young Mistress Flandre wouldn't... wouldn't she, like, Lady Remilia, young Mistress Flandre, wouldn't you want to get the gifts last? It'd be more special that way. 
I don't know if I don't know if Romilia, Oh, oh, I don't know if Romilia or Flandre says this next line. I think it's Romilia. Yeah, All right, fine. Yeah. Uh, I guess you're right. I could make you. I I could I could make you buy and carry all my toys for me if I wanted. But for the sake of the extru of the true experience, have it your way. I'll refrain for now. Well, I want to ride. I like the way you think, sister. Sakuya, to the rides, please. Right away. They passed Main Street, leaving it for later, heading for Fantasyland first. The appeal of the castle made Sakuya, Pacholi, and Mei Ling feel homesick already. He would have blended in perfectly in our Gensokyo clothes here. You're right, Mei Ling. Actually, wait, that's Sakia speaking next. No, wait. Actually, no, it's Pacholi. Pacholi, pardon me. Um, you're right, Mei Ling should have been Sakia. All right. So. Please. You're right, Mei Ling. Sorry. Please, we'd get mistaken for cast members. You're right, Mei Ling. Um, you're also oh, right, wait, Patchouli. Oops. Sorry, you're also right, Patchouli. <laughs> Remilia and Flandre were looking left and right, jaws dropping, eyes beaming. Was this what Gensokyo had been missing the entire time? Five centuries and they had never been to a theme park. Neither of them. Flandre especially felt like her life had a new meaning ever since the cheerful music was accompanying, accompanying the happy jingles and chimes of her crystal wings at every step. Did, did she not hide the wings? <laughs> big sis, big sis. Uh, sis, look at this! Said the younger vampire, pointing at the Mad Hatter's teacups ride. My, 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 I see... Whoa, okay. Uh, Xavier? Yeah? Uh, you completely glitched out when you said that. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, let me try that again. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, like, I sound good now, dude. Do... Yeah, you sound fine. Yeah. You yeah. Sound fine. Okay. My, 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 I see you have the, I, I see you have taste. A pink on brand for the Scarlet Devils. Well done, sister. <laughs> she is such an ojo. <laughs> Romilia excitedly patted her delighted sister's head and started bugging Sakia like there was no tomorrow to get on the ride. When it finally happened, they realized the existence of cues. Should have got fast pass. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey, Sakia, can you? Yes, Mailing. Ask me how long we've been waiting again. Like you've asked me like thir exactly thirty seconds ago. Well, it does not feel like the same 30 seconds in the mansion. Can you blame me? Yes, I can. Your perception of time is warped, Miss Gatekeeper. Well, actually, all of ours are... All of ours are, ever since we made the decision, made the decision to wait in this queue. I'm surprised neither Romilia or even Flandre have snapped already. It's been an hour and 22 minutes. Like, oh, wait, I think that was Pacholi speaking? Gosh darn it. Wait, who's... Yeah, it's hard to tell... It, it, it uh, yeah, been much it's, more it's not just me. It's not easy. It doesn't yeah, help. I don't, I don't know the characters well enough to make judgment. I I, I don't blame you guys when I yeah, when I when I wrote this. Probably should have made it more clear who's yeah, speaking. And who's yeah, yeah. I I don't blame you you guys either because I kind of had some issues when I was reading this. <laughs> I mean, this the, the term said you. character at the end of every um line is kind of a sin, but it's very helpful for people trying to actually read. Yeah. No, I, 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 I get it, yeah. Wait, it's one of those double-edged swords where it's like, must it be at the end of everything? And then, yeah, kind of. <laughs> if it's not I'm gonna clear put a, who's speaking. I'm gonna put a pin in that and get back to that. Okay, alright, I, because I, I think it, like, I, I think, like, I'm pretty sure it's Sakya who says this line, so I'm just going to assume Sakya says this line. Ahaha! Actually, Patchouli, I lent them that cellular phone we've been given for the trip. Indeed, the two vampires were religiously looking at funny moment compilations from the movies featured in the park. For the lore, Remilia even added. Well, at least they were learning something new that their many, many years hadn't taught them already. 
Finally, after waiting who knows how long, the strange family is finally seated on the teacup's ride. Two per teacup, Mei Ling and Sakia, Pacholi and Koakuma, and the two Scarlet Sisters. To think, our first ride will remind us of home. Young Mistress Flander has good picks after all. <laughs> Sakia, just wait until she finds out about the finds out about the thrill rides. The what? Mei Ling? The what? <laughs> Before Mei Ling could reply, the ride started spinning. The Scarlets were having a blast, the time of their eternal lives. Flandre was spinning the wheel in the center to make the tea ugh, make their teacup go even faster. But with strength like hers, it started becoming alarming very fast. Vermilia didn't care about the sound of the screws unscrewing and the cogs running loose, which was very fun to her. Sakia, however, however, could not enjoy the ride, even though Mei Ling tried to let her old friend loosen up with a pe de de. Tried to let her old le old friend loosen up with a tangible stress a bit. Sakia, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Sakia, what's wrong? I swear I could cut your tension with a knife. Hey. Oh, um, uh, sorry, sorry. The, that pun was not intentional. I'm genuinely, genuinely worried about you. Man, that's awkward. Sorry. Mei Ling, how fast do you think these two are spinning exactly? Honestly? Yes, honestly. Well, I don't think the safety lock is allowed to let them is allowed to let them spin this fast, that's for sure. <laughs> Sakia could not take her concerned eyes off the blurry, rotating Scarlet Sisters for the entire ride. So much that she forgot herself that she herself forgot to have fun, despite the desperate attempts from Mei Ling. She started counting every started counting everyone as they dropped off the teacups. Let's see if everyone's here. Lady Remilia, Young Mistress Flandre, myself, Mei Ling, Were Patchouli and Kokuma. Damn yeah, Patchouli. Uh, over here, so, uh, Skyu. Uh, the two librarians were pale like the corpse bride, holding onto their stomachs, shaking. Wakama was sobbing. Are you two okay? Do we look okay to you, Mei Ling? The gatekeeper rushed over to Pacholi, who almost fell over from the dizziness. There's no way these two would survive a sing yeah, would survive a single thrill ride, Sakia thought. Whatever these are, we must keep them an absolute secret. Hey! Big sis! Kakuya! I'm hungry! I want something tasty! On it, sister. Watch this. Remilia looked around for prey. She saw this young human child with cotton candy larger than her own head. The vampire smirked and sneakily walked past her. She tapped the child sol yeah, that's what I say child soldier. She tapped the child's <laughs> shoulder with her wing. Huh? The helpless child turned around, not even noticing that the scarlet devil took that chance to snatch her cotton candy while she was facing the other way. The screams only followed when Armelia was already gone. There! Feast your eyes on this! Whatever it, this is. Wow! Thank you, Remy! This is my first time eating a human snack! Who's that? Finders keeper, sweetie! Go get your own! Awful. Laundry's grin turned to an upset frown very fast. Well, she was nowhere as skilled, nowhere as skilled as Remelia was to find food, but she was going to try anyway. Sakia and her strange entourage putting their trust, excuse me, Sakia and her strange entourage putting their trust on her had been walking for a little while now, and decided it'd be a good time to sit on a be sit on a bench. Ah, uh, there was one that could fit six people on it. She took it as a chance to do another group count. All right, one. Two, three, four, five, five, five. Hey, uh, hey oh. Sakia. Yes, Mei Ling? Don't you think it's been quiet? As if a sound was missing or something? Oh, no. The sound of the chimes and jingles of crystals have been quiet for a while now. 
We lost Flandre. And that segues into chapter two. UN Owen was lost in Tomorrowland. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I'm an idiot. I just realized that the first letters of that song name just spelled Uno. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. I didn't even, like, think about that. I've never actually played Uno. Really? Huh. It's on your really? Xbox. <laughs> yeah, it came, everyone has Uno. It came okay. through with your Xbox. Okay. Actually, fuck off with that shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> you knew that joke was coming. <laughs> First of all, it was a demo. Second of all, it didn't fucking work. <laughs> oh god, that's amazing. I'm 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 very grateful that Noctilio has provided a summary. <laughs> we dared her sister to go get some food by herself. Landry, however, took this very seriously and has been separated from the group. However, a strange girl she has never been be never seen before offers to help out. And so we begin chapter two. Like, do they need blood or is it sort of just a inconvenience? <laughs> I... Just like I, I genuinely thought they were gonna eat the child. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> this, they're vampires, not name only, but I don't think I've ever seen them do anything actively vampiric aside from avoid the sun. They do drink blood. I do know that much, but. So what you're saying is they're closer to gamers than vampires. Yes. Lit. It also depends. Oh god. Uh, it also just depends on the uh, uh, the interpretation because there's you know I'm trying not to die. Oh god. Like bro, same. <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll just die. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> Interpretations of how vampiric the Scarlet Sisters are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's... Uh, yeah, basically. Um, it's pretty much just the Terra characters in the nutshell. It's, it's the... Um, the portrayal is based on the individual writing the story or whatever in question. That's pretty much it. <laughs> what do I... Oh, wait. Okay, so... Alright, chapter two. <clears throat> Sophia, not quite processing, they just lost their most catastrophic party member to the crowd, sat down with a blank, blank, blank expression, her hand over her forehead. How did this happen? I've been so careful. I've been so, so careful. How did this happen? We're smarter than this. God damn it. I couldn't <laughs> help it, I'm sorry. <laughs> She might have actually gone to on Wait, what? This is wording. Okay. Eh. She might have actually gone look for a snack to snatch from a human kid for real. I didn't really... I got that. Wait, this is Joey, definitely you... not my line. Oh, wait. wait yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. Okay. Eh, she might have actually gone to look for a snack to snap for a snack to snatch from a human kid for real. I didn't mean that. Oh well, let's go find her. She couldn't have gone that far. Lady Romelia? What, don't you ever steal food from you helpless human toddlers? 
How dull. You really lack adrenaline in your life. Oh, trust me, my lady. I am good with it right now. <laughs> finders keepers. Finders keepers. Finders keepers. Those words would not leave Fra Landry's mind. I'll show you finders keepers. I'll get a human cloud snake bigger than yours. Just watch. She looked around. She followed the smell of various food trucks she had never seen, smelled or taste before. He was, she was restless. She didn't know what she was looking for, but she was going to find it. Come on, big sis. Don't just follow me around. Give me a few hints there. Silence. No reply. Her sister was with her, right? Right? She turned around, only to find out that Romelia and the rest of her family were gone. She stayed in a state of shock for a few minutes, looking at the crowd of common outside world families pacing back and forth, side to side, around her everywhere she looked, but no sign of another winged figure. Flandre's breath became yeah, excuse me. Flandre's breath became irregular and heavy. She tried to backtrack, only for her to either go in circles or get further lost than before. After a good 30 minutes of panic scattering, Flandre had no idea where she was anymore. She even forgot how hungry she was. She forgot she was in a theme park at all. She was outside, but everything was so foreign. She was sitting on the floor, clutching at her red suspenders from her modern outfit for comfort. She saw those human children, about the same age she'd be if she were mortal, smiling and laughing with their parents, bonding with siblings, playing with friends. Where were hers? Where were her friends? Where... where was Romelia? The little vampire thought about making a scene, about destroying display windows, shooting her bullets to wreck havoc, wreak havoc, to make sure everyone knew how upset she was. But... That's not why she was there, was it? That wasn't the kind of person she was, down to her core, was it? This wouldn't make her happy again, would it? This would make Romelia trust her even less, wouldn't it? Even in this state, she was too kind and polite to do anything about the situation she got herself in. The crystal-winged girl started sobbing. She was lost. How the mighty has... Excuse me, how the mighty has fallen... She could easily solve an, in, solve an incident now, but she couldn't find her way, way back. A wave of negative thoughts started clouding her mind due to the panic and anguish. I don't know who this is. <clears throat> hey, don't cry. This is the happiest place on earth, said a voice she had never heard before. Said a voice that she had never heard before. Flandre looked left and right and didn't find anyone. You all can hear me, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Flandre looked left and right and didn't find anyone. She looked behind her and... Ah! There was someone. She squirmed back in shock. The other child, looking a little older than Romelia, smiled brightly with those eerie, blank green eyes of hers. Hey. This was no human kid. She had a weird cord thingy going around her. She must be from Gensokyo, too. Are you... Are you, are you okay? Sure am. And so are you. How, how do you know? Because <laughs> you're special enough to see me. You're lucky. I'm one of a kind. Laundry like that other girl already. A playful giggle quickly replaced the tears. Let me guess, you lost your sister, right? How, how do you know so much? The new yokai girl started doing the same popular dance Flandre had been repeatedly doing ever since she came to the hotel, to which she sloppily responded with her own. <clears throat> I'm Koichi, Koichi Komeji, and I know everything. Are, are you alone too? Nope. I escaped from my sister behind her back. Uh, oh. Don't you miss her? 
I know she'll find me when I'm done exploring. Wanna come with me? Yeah. There they were. Two lost little sisters living their best lives. What Flandre didn't know, however, was that was that, that new encounter was just as quirky and irresponsible as she was herself. See? Isn't it excuse me. Isn't it great to get lost sometimes? I think so. I'm not really used to being outside. But I trust you. Good, good. Oh, by the way, is this your first time here? Mm-hmm. How about you? It's my second, which means I know all the park seekers from snooping around. You know everything about here? From just one time? Yeah. That's the Koichi experience, and you're in for something. It's so cool. Would you like me to show you? Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Is, isn't it against the rules? Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, don't worry. When you've got an invisible friend, there are no rules. <laughs> the smell of a food truck reminded Flandre why she got separated in the first place, and her stomach started rumbling. Koichi noticed. Joey. I'm not Koishi. No, it's Flandre speaking. Is it? Oh. Yeah, she's... <laughs> my, my sister stole one of these big cloud snacks from a kid earlier. <laughs> I I'm sorry, but she's kind of an amateur. Watch. I'll steal from the truck. Flandre gasped. And <clears throat> excuse me. Flandre gasped. She watched, Koishi she watched Koishi with bated breath as the expert visitor playfully strutted her way towards the food uh, towards the food stall where a staff member was overwhelmed by people who couldn't stand in line patiently story of my life mm -hmm. koishi being unnoticed by humans effortlessly effortlessly walked past all the angry single <laughs> all the angry single mothers and grabbed two large cotton candies from under the staff member's nose she came back whistling a familiar tune and gave flandre the largest cotton candy of the two <clears throat> The little vampire's wings were flapping and chiming in delight and anticipation. She looked at the yokai girl, waiting for her, her approval to dig in, and took a huge bite out of the cloud after Koichi gave her a cheerful nod. That, that's that's awesome! Do it again! Telling Donald Duck. <laughs> Looks like I got myself a fan. I can do so much more, you know. Say, do you know about... The thrill rides. Oh my god, no. <laughs> Elsewhere, still in Fantasyland, Sakia looked and called everywhere for Flandre, but no answer, no crystal chime, no rainbow glow in the distance. Even Remilia, usually unbothered by her sister's antics, started feeling increasingly worried and somehow guilty. <sighs> Flakama was looking at her pamphlet over and over again. Discussing with Pacholi and Meiling, if they were Flandre, where would they have gone? That is a long sentence. <clears throat> Except everyone kept contradicting themselves, so no progress was made at all. Uh, hey, Saki, I think we should split up to cover more ground. Meiling, I have already lost one vampire. I can't lose all of you. But who knows where she could have gone? We're just going to have to meet up at Main Street in an hour, and I'll be, and it'll, it'll be fine. Sakia thought about it for a moment. Well, yes, this would be feasible. If anyone's per the perception of time was accurate for once, they could meet up within an hour with Flan meet up within an hour with Flandre found faster. If, of course, nothing else happens in the way. All right, Mailing, you come with me. Librarians, you go together. Lady Remilia, will you come with us or them? I'll go alone. Lady Remilia, I can't allow this. Well, I'm kind of at fault for this, and besides, I'm a vampire. I'm not like you. I can find Flandre my by myself better than all of you combined. Sakia was taken back, taken aback a little. It was the first time she'd seen her usually bratty, entitled mistress feel responsible for anything, let alone Flandre. Oh, Mickey Mouse, the wonders you do for the people around you. 
Farewell, Lady Ramelia, but be careful. I want you to have Mei Ling's cellular phone if you go alone. All right, I'll be back in an hour. And she stormed off into the crowd. Was was this a good idea at all? Sakia was starting to have second thoughts already. Don't worry, she'll be fine. We've just got to do our part. Every time you told me not to worry, Mei Ling happened. Mei Ling, something happened. Sorry, just like it cut out the very end. <clears throat> Every time you told me not to worry, Mei Ling, something happened. Thank you. And so, with that worrying premise, the maiden gatekeeper, gatekeeper left librarians to find a rainbow-winged vampire. Little did they know, little did they know what she was up to at that exact moment. Flandre be- Gosh. Flandre behold, this is Space Mountain. Koichi performed a refined bow to emphasize, to emphasize on how grand the stakes for this were. Flandre could barely contain herself anymore. Smoke was escaping, escaping from a big launching platform. People were screaming, inside and outside. Something never, excuse me, nothing, uh, something never seen before was happening in this LED-covered building. What is this place? Hehe, <laughs> it's a thrill ride. It's a thrill ride the grumps never want you to find out about. Why are they screaming? Will I scream too? Yes. I want to go. Flandre hastily grabbed Koichi's hand and rapidly waddled her way towards the ride. Ah, uh, question mark. A new type of problem. Hey, I'm not tall enough to ride this. Big Sis wouldn't let me. Well, that's where being lost is starting to get fun. Come on, I know a shortcut. Flandre had learned by now to trust the yokai girl in her big hat. Not that Flandre was already known, excuse me, not that Flandre wasn't already known to be gullible, but this, this was different. There was a curiosity to it that she, that she would not satiate. <clears throat> the invisible older kid success, successfully managed to sneak both herself and even a glowing, chiming vampire child effortlessly into the VIP ticket line unnoticed. <clears throat> Despite obviously not having one of those, one of these fancier passes. She was talented for stealth, that's for sure. The line was empty. They both could walk completely carefree towards the ride, as Flandre discovered the sci-fi setting for the first time. She was mesmerized. Have you ever been to space, Flandre? Nah. I'm kind of a stay-at-home. Hey, I'll have to show you my basement, by the way. I worked very hard on it. Sounds neat. <clears throat> <laughs> the two girls strapped themselves onto the front row. Flandre's feet could not touch the floor, and her wings stuck out a bit. It was surprising how no one noticed she was too small for the ride. Or the fact that she has wings. But she wasn't going to tell them as long as Koichi was there. <clears throat> The yokai girl gently tucked her new friend's crystals under the, uh, the, pardon me. The yokai girl gently tucked her new friend's crystals under the plastic harness. It was quickly their turn. Their shuttle started moving and getting into the lawn. Started moving and getting into the launching platform. Is this where we scream, Koish? Yep. The lights started flashing. A pre-recorded voice started counting down. Flandre's heart was racing already. Boom. <clears throat> they took off. She had never felt anything like this before. The shell started spinning, twirling, almost dancing. This is why they screamed. And Flandre made extra sure her vocal cords could out would outmatch everyone else's. The caress of the air rustling through her hair at the speed. The rush of adrenaline. This is everything she had been asking when looking for a they made for all this time. This was the life she had been dreaming of all, dreaming of all these centuries. That was amazing. Let's go again, 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 again. Of course. Let's run this ten times. Ten times? Ten times? Let's go, let's go, let's go. <clears throat> Team Gatekeeper and Maid were... <clears throat> excuse me. Team Gatekeeper and Maid was investigating Main Street. 
praying in vain that they would run into Flandre. Praying in vain that they would run into Flandre, and possibly that Romelia would change her mind and stick around them too. After all, the young mistress was always docile back in the mansion. She always did what Romelia told her to. She couldn't have wandered off to one of those drill rides, right? Unless... Uh, Sakia, did you just... Did you see what I just saw? I sure hope I didn't. <clears throat> that is the end of chapter two. Da, 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 da. So, are we done for the night? It's up to you. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to yawn, so... Fair enough. I mean, if you guys want to stop. I have to work on stuff, so I, I think this is a good time as any yeah, end. Um, Alright, fair enough. Um, we're so, done? Okay. Yeah, we're done. Final thoughts. <clears throat> uh, well, I, I enjoyed this more. Yeah, I enjoyed this more than I thought I would. Um, just by having, like, like, I've seen some fan OBAs, so I have, uh, I have a gist. <laughs> Yeah, not the gist, but I have a gist of what the characters are supposed to be like. Yeah, you, you uh, yeah, you and Xavier have seen uh, stuff with me, so you, uh, you, you guys have a, any of the names. Yeah, you guys. Well, you guys have at least an idea, I guess. And I also yeah, have an inkling, have an idea. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Um. I I, en I enjoyed this well enough. Um. The author seems to kind of oscillate between using present and past tense for character actions, so it's mm. really. Throwing me off a bit. <clears throat> and yeah, Joey brought up the point of uh, the, like, you know, signifying character dialogue. Yeah, I think. Um, in I, literature, like... it's a big double edged sword, as I said. It's one of those things that has to be there sometimes, but if every character is just saying they said at the yeah. beginning or end of everything, yeah. you're going to have a very boring story and you're not going to be able to portray any emotion at all. I think the yeah I think the main fi uh, issue with the story is that it, the the presentation is a little bit flawed in some ways because yeah it it's not always clear who's speaking. Um, but, it yeah. is most certainly a fan fiction in that regard. Right. Um, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. That that, that that's a little like <laughs> the, that's a little like the only issue. Like Other than that, I'm, I'm it... really enjoying the writing, and I'm yeah. loving how Flandre is yeah. written and the character that I've given them. Yeah, yeah, I, I you know, that's, uh, I, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoyed the story a lot, so that's why I, uh, wanted to do it for story time. Especially since, uh, like, I, I'm pretty sure, like, growing up, we've all, um, been outside with, like, parents or older siblings or whatnot, and got, gotten lost at some point and freaked out. And I think that's yeah. just that part of the story itself, I think, is really reliable. So, I, I like that. In the future, I would like to read more um, hyper-excitable characters. Fair enough. Because <laughs> I'm having a blast. The only reason I'm saying not to do the third chapter today is because it is... Like, four oh, four in the morning! <laughs> You know, I, I can I can tell with your the, your cadence of voice that like you're actually putting like a lot of effort into it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are enjoying it more I, than I, I expected. I've always tried to put effort into my speechcraft. Mm-hmm. Just not when I'm talking casually, as Scrappy can attest to. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, as you as you uh, know now, the other <laughs> character that wasn't part of the image is uh, Koishi. So there you go. <laughs> Lit. She's not. She's in a different. She's not from the same game. For the record, she's from. Uh, I don't know wh which game she's from, but it's not the same one. Let's just put it like that. And after this, Maybe I can't not. wait to read the prequel. Koichi goes to Disneyland. That'd be great. <laughs> no. I um. I don't remember what I saw of the Scarlet Sisters from like the OVAs I watched. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there was definitely hints of Laundry just being very idolizing of her older sister, but this seems to be the story kind of depicts it more clearly. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, she may be a little demon hell spawn, but she is a child. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
the author is doing a very good job yeah. of indirectly directing where what sort of emotions I should be expressing through uh, with the characters. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. And yeah, shout it's out to definitely reflecting well. Mm. Yes, I I agree. Um, yeah, shout out to Sakiya for playing the beleaguered guardian and having to um, chaperone everyone at this because. Yeah. That is an under as an underappreciated role in life. Yeah. <laughs> like shout outs to the moms. I have them do that. Yeah, it's a stressful uh, uh, thing. Yeah. Especially when you have like, uh, well, it, I, I guess in this especially case, especially when you're the guardian of vampires. Yeah. In in this case, it's especially um, nerve wracking. Because you have vampires that could just <laughs> destroy the park at a moment's notice. Yeah, I mean they could just turn the sun off. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Also, chapter two is a lot better written than chapter one. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. I do. En I do also enjoy the fact that since they have uh, Flandre getting lost, they have. Um, this also um, gets goes further in later chapters where like they you just have different groups in like just doing different things, um, and I find I I just find that kind of dynamic fun. You just have a bunch of groups just. You know. I'd say that would also be a strong suit for the story to di divide up the characters. Yeah. Which I, can, I think yeah, me I and Scrappy should take notes on that we should div divide up our characters a little bit more. Right. Um, um, easier to hide certain archetypes overlapping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. Easier to get yeah. certain aspects of storytelling out with smaller groups. Mm. I do. I w I do think we had we have like all the characters that are going to show up in this fic now, so we don't need to worry about any newcomers, as far as I'm aware. Oh, like, except for Mickey Mouse. Mm. Um, I mean, I you guys. I mean, you guys got a general idea of what kind of character Karishi was, so I, I probably don't need to explain too much there. Um, but, um, the, I, I, I guess the, just on a, as a general thing, uh, she's a Sa Satori yokai, which is basically, um, she has the, the ability to read people's minds, but she didn't, okay, from what I understand, her, her sister, um, went through traumatic experiences because of that and no one really likes their species because people don't like their minds being read so i mean yeah <laughs> the you no not really um I'll, I'll have to stop that then sorry <laughs> i mean it, it i guess it depends but um yeah, basically what happened is karishi um like permanently shut her third eye, which is base, which is the. I need to get a picture of her. Hold on. It's her means to use her powers. I'm going to guess. Yeah, you. You'll see it very clearly if once I get an image here. Um, yeah, I'll just post post it here. Um, yeah, that thing. Don't turn a drinking game out of how many times Harry says um. I I don't like. I, yeah, I don't like the fact that I do that either. I, <laughs> but no, I, yeah, you see that there, like, she, the, <laughs> the eye... Oh, that character. Yeah, the, the eye, the eye is closed because she permanently shut it, um, which means she can't read emotion, uh, not, she can't, uh, read people, uh, anymore. But that also... So is that the sister, or is that the one on Space Mountain? That's the one, on, that's the one in the story. Right. Um, from what, from what I understand, the fact that she closed her eye may, makes it so um, she can't really be remembered by people. Um, and as the story pretty much said, like she, she's pretty much invisible a lot of the time. <laughs> like it's hard for people to even notice like she's there. So. And, Sorry uh, to hear that. <laughs> um, and yeah, 
because of that, she tends to, uh, what, what should I call it? Okay, so, I, I, I'm still learning things, so that, um, this uh, ex explanation is really sloppy, I apologize. Um, but, yeah, her, her sister, which is called Satori, because <laughs> it's like the same deal as like Fox McCloud, just make your name as like your species, or your <sighs> race, or whatever. Um, uh... But yeah, because of, because of what happened, Karishi ends up ended up being a bit more of a uh, introvert, I guess. And like Satori wants her sister to basically be more like her original self, where she was a lot more um, outgoing in the. I don't know how to say. It. Like she she wants her sister to go back to her original self, I guess, as far as- I might be getting some of that stuff wrong, uh, but that's what I understand. Yeah, <laughs> that was- that was really sloppy. <laughs> I well, hope that made some none sense. Us... <clears throat> Excuse me. None of us are versed enough in Toho lore to counteract that, so we're going to have to take your word for it. Yeah, if I, I should have yeah. Toho lore complete shot in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, well, yeah, there's, uh, there's Reimu who uh, is just really lazy. <laughs> and that's different how? I mean, it, it, it's not, I, I brought that up because it is, uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to go talk about like outgoing characters, Marissa's really outgoing, so that's that. She's also very mischievous. <laughs> I like how I'm just like <laughs> like Toho Wiki right now. <laughs> this feels really weird. Don't worry about it, Harry. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not usually. We're, we're, yeah. we're not gonna do an entire freaking thing just on Toho Law. You'd be talking for hours. No one would get it. I'd probably fall asleep. <laughs> I'm just saying the stuff that's relevant to this. Anyway, I I I I find the series law fascinating, so And again, I'm still uh, I'm still learning a bunch of stuff. I'm a noob. <laughs> so yeah, please, if, if anyone's watching this that's more well versed in Toho lore, please, <laughs> like, say if I got any of this wrong, because I probably did. I mean, we could always try and track down the author of this story, like we did with the other one, I... because apparently they're a ten-year Toho vet. So. Yeah, I mean, I I could do that. <laughs> Whereas. Listening to Night of Nights for 12 years, 13 years doesn't count as being a Toho veteran. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it also depends if they respond, because I, I have uh, reached out to a few uh, authors of stories we've read before and I just get no response, so. Like. Story of my life. Oh, cool. Networking is hard, folks. Yeah. Wait, have you have you ever tried sending them a letter with an actual wax seal on it? That would get their attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go that far. I don't care that much. That's your problem. You're not you're not willing to go the extra mile. <laughs> I, mean, Just I, like... sent a, I mean, I sent a physical letter to Sony. I haven't gotten word back yet, so. <laughs> well, they're always hiring in the mail room. <laughs> But your lesser probably still is. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that was um, Scarlet Devil and Friends. We say with air quotes, go to Disney World. It's, it's cute so far. So good pick, Harry. I, I was about Thanks. to make a mistake and ask, uh, are they actually friends? And then Harry's going to reopen the wiki. <laughs> no, I... I, 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 I mean, I... Mm -hmm. I, I'll say, uh, I, I guess... Um, I'll say this. I did look I did look up a few things from the wiki before 
the stream, but I have legitimately been saying all of all of this from memory, so <laughs> Neat. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we'll reconvene this, I don't know, maybe tomorrow if Tanner's available, but that's to be determined. If not, then sometime, sometime next week. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, I got nothing else. Uh... I don't think uh, Xavier's said said much about this. Uh, well, do you, do you have anything to add, Xavier? Is he still here? He's muted right now. Oh. Rip. Well, I mean, yeah, the three of us have already said our piece, so... I'm just... I'm just having great fun reading the character. I don't care about the lore. Yeah. Fair. Probably get some Toho fans going, That's not how the character sounds, sir! I mean, there is no way the character sounds. <laughs> no, no exactly. One. No one should be reading any of the character lines. Leave it to the imaginations of the listeners of a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Which just technically is. <laughs> We're just like, the, like, the, like I'm, I'm, like, it's, the, like this is the umpteenth disclaimer I've made on this. But story time, it, the readers of story time are not beholden to sound even remotely like the characters in canon. Mm, yeah, that's just a formality. We and don't I... have enough people with a great enough vocal range to come even close. Yeah, and I mean, so... I, I, it, it's also like the thing about to her, to her as well is like, um. The characters are just based on interpretation. Like, there's so many different takes on them that you kind of, you can kind of just make up what you want. Oh God! I hope no one expects me to be the canon voice then. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awful in so many ways. <laughs> Jeez. Cool. So, uh, do it, yeah, I was, do are it, we gonna wait for Xavier or are we gonna cut it here? Cause, yeah, because I don't know how much longer we want to prolong this. Hi, I'm Super Nintendo Game Boy, and subscribe <laughs> to my channel. I make Mario Paint remixes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Xavier does do that, doesn't he? Yes. He should make they're actually, they're brain. actually pretty good. Yeah, they they're are. Very good. He, he should, he should yeah. make them for C's brain. Mm, we asked him once, didn't we? Or did no one get around to that? Oh, I that's... asked. I I asked how much he was taking for commissions. I didn't, like, I'm like, I'm broke, so we, we that'd be great if we like had. Did to... he take it seriously? <laughs> he seemed to be. I just I'm just broke, so it wouldn't uh, really matter one way well, or the other. Well, what did you commission specifically, like? I didn't commission anything. I asked him how much the commissions cost. Uh, well, or... what, 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 what would you have commissioned? A remix of something, probably a Scooby Doo theme song. I mean, I have a. He's a. I don't think you necessarily need to commission. I, I, I he, he, he'll, he'll probably like, um, do something if you ask. Cause I've, I've done that before. So. We just need the story time with Scrappy theme song, which we play at the beginning of every episode. That'd be and great. We're gonna do that for like two episodes and forget about it ever existing. <laughs> I mean, uh, so I mean, with, with that. What um, did I miss? There you oh, are. Oh yeah, we were just asking you very nicely with a cherry on top, pretty please, if you could make us a theme song for story time with Scrappy. <laughs> no. Oh How no. Much would it cost? Rip. <laughs> It'd be fun. Wait, it would be funny if Xavier made like a, like a Sea Spring theme song. I don't know what that would sound like. But... Yeah, I don't. I don't even know where I would go with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like... 
Yeah, I have okay, no idea. Okay, can I just ask you to repurpose a pre-existing song as a short jingle? So what we're going to do is we're going to get Xavier to make a remix of the weakest Link theme. <laughs> okay. And these guys have no idea what I'm talking about. I, I, I know what the weakest Link is. I, just, I, I know what it is. Okay. That's like yeah. your statement I, speaks for itself. Yeah, I no. know the weakest yeah, I, I haven't seen that in years, but, yeah. Uh, that's because of a lot of reasons, actually. Mm. Find but out why is... in our podcast. Well... Nah, nah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's a discussion for another day. We, we, don't, we don't have time to bring the podcast back at the moment. Yeah, we actually don't. <laughs> like, there is actually a lot of reasons why we can't, and yeah, they are not I, I, joke reasons. I yeah I that's another and thing. Like, I, actually, a lot of them we can't actually discuss. So yeah, that's also a thing with uh, playthroughs as well. Like we need to record more uh, commentaries, but <laughs> things are difficult, so it's not easy to do that right now. I think with commentaries, it was decided that when it's possible, uh, we are going to finish what we currently have to. We're going to finish Force Unleashed then... when we can. I think we put a ban on making any new raw footage. Yeah, unless yeah. Unless it's did. new raw footage for a project that's already been started. Yeah. And then once everything that's already open has been closed, then no more raw footage until we have like three things left to do. Right. But yeah, the point is though, like, we'll, we'll get to. We get to record a more commentary soon, it's just there's for select few of us, let's say, there's a really important stuff going on that has our attention right now. Yeah. So <coughs> we'll just leave it at that. Harry's getting deported. Sorry, we, we had to tell. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you, you, was born in. You, you had to tell him. <laughs> That is possible, but I don't want to go into why. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Xavier, jingle. Uh... <laughs> How much can I do? I have to pay you ten thousand dollars. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 oh god! I, I yeah, think we could go on Fiverr and What's just that? go like, I want a theme song. How much for like a thirty second? There's your theme song, good. Let, we'll just cut that out of uh, the uh, streams VOD, and we're just going to put that at the beginning of everything. I just made something up on the spot that made no sense. <laughs> Welcome to music. <laughs> what the hell? Um, okay. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> So Xavier, what are your two cents on the fanfic? I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I already went over this. He did. Wait, did we? Yeah. Oh, you said all you needed to. Yeah, yeah. I pretty much said what I. I already said what I needed to, and I'm because like I, I mean like I, because like um, but I mean I'll I'll say it again for clarity's sake. I like I I liked it um, but I mean like pretty much like. Pretty much like my my complaint was almost also like the same as everyone else's but is the fact that there's no real there's no clarity over who over who's saying what we just mm -hmm. like especially if you know like uh yeah read or whatever I I didn't we didn't hear any of that what oh um yeah after like, you said like uh. Like it's hard to know who's talking or whatever. Yeah, like like especially if you're like probably like if you're probably not like not a Toho. Yeah. Yeah. Because like it, it would definitely be hard to distinguish. Like... Mm. Well, obviously we have to give roles to to who's gonna be which character. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, it's pretty good so far. If we had yeah. a budget, we'd um, take the fan fictions, turn them into PDFs, and mm. highlight and color code them. 
<laughs> but I mean, I could... nobody's going to do that. I mean, I, I could do that, but... Do you want to do that? that was... I mean, I, I don't want to do a lot of things for this show, but I still do them. I mean, I I, I guess for, for a, a story as short as this, it wouldn't be too bad. For, for something like... Uh, uh, till we make our ascent, that that'll be a nightmare. Mm. <laughs> I like your idea, though. I'll I'll keep it in mind, Joey. So, so yeah, when it that... com when it comes to things where we were reading a script, we knew who was talking because of how scripts are written. Right. But yeah, yeah. The highlighting thing would be great if we can get someone to do it. Mm -hmm. And that depends on people having time and wanting to do it. Because I don't want to force Scrappy to do it, and also, it's Scrappy's show, he can do the fuck he wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he, uh, he wanted to switch the Twitch channel to C's Brain, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, it's because this is ostensibly a Seize Brain original series. Yeah, this as... is the Seize Brain original series. <laughs> I mean, I had to, uh, like, take, like, it, it was a pain, like, setting this up properly, but apparently it works, so I guess it's fine. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> You're welcome. I try. Companies don't let you set 1900s as an age because they know no one's alive from them, but they have to have the biggest number. Alright, I'm just gonna kill this uh, group of the goblins and I'll just. I guess we'll just end the stream, so. If you're gonna say your closing words, uh, say them now. Um, yeah, that's it for now. We'll read something else next. In the future. I'm not committing to anything anymore because. <laughs> it never works. <laughs> I'm yeah. Joe from Bootleg Raccoon. No, none of my group have made any content because of a mix of life reasons and um, unwillingness to do anything. Fair enough. <laughs> See you real soon! Uh -huh. oh. My god, Mickey's coming to break my kneecaps! Mickey, you, better have, you, nice. you better have my payment by next month! Uh -huh. uh, we'll just... I thought Disney only bought profitable companies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Wait, we're, we're not even a company. <laughs> we're a couple of idiots on the internet. We don't class as a company unless someone registers us. <laughs> I guess, yeah. And then we got to pay taxes. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Good. Actually, no, we don't have to pay taxes because we've got a net profit of nothing. <laughs> God. Invest um... in us. Ah uh, yes, invest in the C's on your local yeah, yeah, stock yeah, breaker. Yeah, in, yeah, invest in C's coin. C's, C's, oh, C's coin. And the C's brain NTF. NF team. And if any of you invest in that, I will disown you. Like, yeah, I, I, we are not talking about that right now. We're I also not turning I will our say logo this. into Troy, I, 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 like, I will say this. Apparently Troy Baker was selling NFTs at Funimation and uh, followed him. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, Literally so he, no one he, he ended his career. <laughs> wow. Wait, what really? The... Troy Baker ended his whole career? Yeah. So he's... Isn't he like a pretty big voice actor? He is, yeah. He did, well, I mean, he did a, mean, yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. The that unfollowed him is like, yeah, it's just like big oof. Yeah, don't... I mean, he doesn't do anime anymore, but... Yeah, he still does a lot of stuff, though, as far as Like, he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be but, fine. Yeah, probably. But, but moving yeah, on. Move, yeah, moving on from, uh, from yeah. that. N NFTs suck. Moving on. Let. So, yeah, um, this has been story time with Scrappy and friends, and we will read something in the future, not committing to anything, because that just, it never works. And, well, we hope you all have a peaceful, hopefully warm, healthy rest of your day. So, thank you all. Have a good night. See you guys later. Bye. It's January, it's cold. Yeah, I know. That's why I said hopefully warm.